looks like we're back at one. Hugh, do you want to say anything before we start? Yes. Hello, David. Hi there. Hello. And I um, uh, hope you're doing well. There you are. Hello. And uh, hello. And uh, we're here and we're just going to share the screen. I think that's what we're going to do. You can hear us. I'm, give us a thumbs up. You can hear us okay. In, in, oh, okay, thank you. Uh, so we're, going, we're here at one o'clock. We're going to spend some little time looking at the map, uh, which is the interactive map, which is the fruit of our many years of labor and discussion and enterprise and efforts. And here we have this beautiful, thanks to Guy, this beautiful map. And uh, Guy is going to talk a bit about the map uh, right now. So uh, over to you Guy, T tell us something about this interactive map and Nolan's going to move some ground. Well, the original concept of the map was <coughs> started when the Congress first started um, with a gentleman that's no longer here, so it never came to fruition. So basically, I just started creating a spreadsheet of locations. Obviously, a road goes from one location to another, so if you don't have a list of locations, it's kind of hard to figure out where the road was or where it went. So the theory was to create a master list and then everybody could work the roads from that. So that's basically what this is. Uh, each one of the icons, if you click on it, will display the information that we've added in the spreadsheet. And you can add more, you can add links to uh, another website, et cetera. So it's, you can do a lot with it. I mean, it's very basic in the, my Google Maps. It's free and it's simple. If I could learn to use it and do this, it's got to be fairly simple. So if somebody wants to get into ArcGIS or QGIS and develop a mapping system, that's fine. I'll be happy to work with them. And we've been work I've been working to add locations. There's like 2,100 or so locations in the current list, the regional list. And I've probably got it up to about 3,100, but that's a slow process by taking like the Muzon map, for example, and going by district and pulling out everything out of that district. A house, yeah. and that map, houses usually have a last name, no first name. So you still don't really know who that was. Anything that appears to be a, or potentially a historic feature, a church, a house, a fort, a bridge, anything like that off the map. So uh, pretty much done the Muzon map and that brought the list up to about 3,100 locations. Uh, the Mills Atlas is a little further in the future, but it has a little more detail as far as some road names, etc. And there's a map, I think it's by Colet, done in 1770, that also has some road names on it. So. Those two maps will be the next part of the process to try to pull data out and put it on the map so everybody can see it and start working their own projects off of it. And if anybody sees anything they want to add to a given point, you go to the website, there's an option to open up a Google form, fill it out, and it'll submit the information and then we'll review it and then add it into the map. Where's that? That's on the, you have to go back or you to can send an email with main, all the information the you want to main webs provide. Have to go back to the Historic Mapping Congress website. So we're just going to show everybody where that is yeah. located. And go back there. Go to Mapstoria. And then down there. Go, uh, and it's go up a little bit. Actually, so we need to improve that on the map story. Yeah. Should be oh, there we go. Yeah. Submission guidelines. There and we go. Go down and you get map story. Yeah. This needs to be improved probably. There's a whole list. You keep going down a bit further. And there we, there we go. There's two types of submissions. One would be for a brand new location that's not currently in the spreadsheet or in the database. And then if there's a record there that you have new information on or you want to update the information, there's an update submission form that 
they're both very similar. It's just one, the update one leaves a little information off. It's not necessary because it's already in the database. So it gives you a simple way to add information. You don't have to put it on a Word document, attach it to an email if you can get to the website. The alternative would be put it on a Word document and email it to us. So that's how we can, everybody can help update and add to the spreadsheet. And is it true when you fill out the form, it's some sort of a question about how, how sure you are that this is actually legitimate information? Say that again. Uh, when you fill out the form, there's a, there's a, you, you can tell, are you very sure about this place? Is this a sort yeah, of 100% a confidence or, rating of like yeah. one to five? Mm -hmm. One being absolutely, you know, it's true, you've got documentation. The five would mean basically, we think it might have been there, we think mm -hmm. it might have happened, but we're not sure. So it's just a reference point for future research. Mm -hmm. And the in between would just be kind of a mm -hmm. graduation guess of accurate to, we don't know. The, the possibilities are endless to add material to the site. And, and uh, as I mentioned, there are some very good websites out there already, such as the Highway Marker website. And there's a website which shows all the highway markers. It's wonderful. There they all are. But that's just the highway markers. And we can't do anything with that. That's, um, that's the state. Uh, and so, that's strictly South Carolina, too. That's, that, that's yes. not been done in North Carolina. Hmm. There's, there's one for North Carolina. North I found Carolina. one for North Carolina. Oh, there, there's a state marker, yeah. But yeah. In South Carolina, for the 250th, if you go on their website, there's a specific map for, mm -hmm. we started out with 189 state markers. Oh, okay. The ones that have the badge looking metal mm -hmm. post. And as we got into the state going around, we found now we're up to like almost 600 Revolutionary War markers. Wow. They're not the state markers, they're markers put up by citizens, family members, genealogical societies, historical societies, just businesses, etc. Mm -hmm. But there's tons of them out there. So the mm -hmm. map now, if you go to that website, mm -hmm. has roughly 600 That's markers on it. That's a major company. We don't have pictures and stuff added. We have over 3,000 pictures of markers, but that part of it has not been uh, updated yet. They're yeah. still waiting on their web guy to come in, hire a web guy and cloud storage and get all that set, and then we'll build out the page for the markers. That's a major contribution back to it. Say again. That's a major contribution back to you to have gotten that done. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Guy, was, you've been very much involved with the South Carolina. Yeah. Yeah, most of my work has been in South Carolina. Yeah. So I have a question, which is, you know, like you said, the possibilities are endless, but in your opinion, you know, what, what do you see as the end line? Like, what is a historic site? You know, d does this end, is the Civil War the newest sites you want? Like, where does that end? Yeah, this is primarily re colonial revolutionary. revolutionary war. Got primarily it. Primarily revolutionary war. Okay. So that could run anywhere from 1755 or 60 okay. up to... 1783 or a little past got it well exactly yeah, that's a discussion we had along the way about this uh, because yeah that's very much we the map really focuses on the colonial and revolutionary era the highway markers for instance would have cover everything harry gold and the civil rights mm -hmm. there. and yeah, uh, yeah civil North wars carolina and south carolina markers cover everything everything in the state it's not specific to a one topic um, so we but our topic focus is really much more on the Revolutionary War colonial era uh, in and we're focusing po primarily in North Carolina and South Carolina although your map does cover Florida and Georgia as well well there's also Georgia and Florida but Florida had very few incidents Georgia had a few but not a great deal okay. And then my second question is a similar question, which is what types of sites are on this map? Almost anything. It could be a mill, okay. a sawmill, a gross mill. It could be a ford, a landing, a ferry, a bridge, 
Skirmish. Churches, businesses. Okay. Battle sites, skirmishes, muster sites. So the goal is really to reconstruct as much as we can from this revolutionary period. Okay, awesome. So if we work with you to create layers with those different categories. Exactly. Exactly. Because they have not layered it that on that basis yet. Right. That's exactly right, which is it would be nice to be able to see. Right now you see a lot of blue markers, and it would be really nice to see be able to see colorful different colors for individual things so you all the churches would be one color and all the battles would be another color um, and so that you could sort of you could focus on that and, and also to be able to research it or, and to um, be able to uh, find you know look up a name and be able to find where it is on the map mm. now another very important part of this whole story is maybe if we go back to the north carolina map sure. uh, which is Oh, yeah. Over here. It's on state location. Oh, there we go. It's on it. Because this is the uh, historic map in Congress, if we go back to Charlotte, we, one key, see that little black line running up, the, up there, a little bit north there? That's the road that I talked about this morning, which is Bates' test question. What's the name of that road? Very good. Okay. Uh, Bates Ford Road. It's because we can, can actually put the roads on the map, which was always something that we wanted to do for years and years. And you can actually put the roads on the map. And now I have to find out how to put the name of the road on the map because at the moment it just says Lauren Ford. Well, yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, yeah. Okay. So. Uh, uh, we but we want to put the names of the roads on the map, uh, uh, roads of the colonial era, because this is really one of the topics of the historic mapping congress is to research about and discuss where were the colonial roads, which is always a big question because they, they changed, as Bill would tell us and uh, others would tell you know the roads change, don't they? They uh, in the summer it's one thing, in the winter it's another. And, that one. Or, or, or no official road names at that time. Mm. You can pick out the day for postal purposes. There were no official road names. So one particular road might be known as the Charlotte Road, the Annie Cameron Road, and the Great Road, mm. the Wagon Road. They are all. You have to be careful when you see references. Right. Realizing that there were no official road names. Couldn't use something like a road between Camden and Charlotte, or, which could go either way depending on which mm. town you're in and which way you're headed. Mm. Is it, is it, so it, Five twenty one didn't exist back then, I guess. Right. <laughs> All this numbering system and and, and as as you're pointing out, Bill, these are modern these are constructions. For instance, there's no Great Wagon Road in the colonial records. This is more or less a modern construction. They might have called it the road, the Salisbury Road, or the Philadelphia Road, or the Wagon Road. In, in, in particular, Bates Ford Road meant the road to Bates Ford. Mm -hmm. It might have passed by many other sites along the way. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. If you were moving the opposite, in the opposite direction on that same road, it might have been referred to as Charlotte Road. Mm -hmm. so that's the they're doing the entire farm to be going down to Charlotte, to to Charlotte. Yeah. So um, it's, it's just an important distinction. When you read old references, you need to be uh, aware that the names mentioned in old references don't necessarily mean official names of roads. They, mean, mm. they could have various meanings depending on how that road is used. Right. Yes. So the because people weren't, they didn't really, most people weren't using the Muzon map. They were just, they were living here or they were visiting here and say, how do I get to Charlotte? Well, you, you know, it's that road there, isn't it? That's the road to Charlotte, that's the Charlotte road. And uh, that, off they would head with their wagon. Until the postal system, it was the postal system that forced official names on roads. Mm. But we want to determine where they are. So I got put that one in there, and then we want to put them on the map. Um, 
um, where all the, the, the colonial era roads were, as best as we can determine, uh, because there's some discussion about some of these roads, you know, where they actually went, so, you know, how they, what they actually did when they got into Charlotte, where they actually went. And they have been moved occasionally, names of what these roads, have, they may be called one thing now, but the, the actual route has been redefined over the centuries, I suppose you'd say. But we want to get these roads into the map, uh, part of the, uh, the landscape that the mines. You know, what were people thinking about who lived here 250 years ago? What was, what was their mindset? What could they see if they were here? What would, they, what would, what would be their world view? Looking at their places, things going on here. The possibility with North Carolina is David McCorkle's done all the a lot of the flat work on his website. If you can find, as I migrate names up there, most of the houses on the maps are just a last name. There's no first name, so you have no real clue other than it's Smith or Williams or Williamson or whoever. The David site, you may be able to actually track down based on where it was at and the last name, who that really belonged to, and link to David's record from that particular location on the map. Well, that would be good. Dave, Dave, do you have any comments about that? Yeah, and the, the way you can search, you can narrow it down to um, county, keeping in mind the county's changed. Um, and David also- Austin. David, um, we're wondering if you think that this map could be linked with some of your records to figure out the plats, to figure out who actually owns some of these sites. Right, can you hear me? Can Maybe you all not. hear me? I may have scared him when I said that. <laughs> I believe so. Hello, hello. David, do you want to try again? How about now? Yeah. Hmm. It looks like his mic's on. Mine is on. Maybe is it trying to come through here? All right, one more time. How about now? There we, oh, go. There we go. Yay. Sorry about that. Not Ooh. a problem. I, I'm usually on your end, so I know how that technology works. Yeah, so basically on the, the NC Land Grants website, you can search on the surname, but you can always also narrow it down to the county, keeping in mind that the county's changed. So like Union County used to be Mecklenburg and Anson. And there's also, when they do a grant, they always kind of give the, on the waters of, so it'll say on the waters of uh, Sugar Creek or whatever, and that can help narrow down where it is. But for searching, that's the best you're going to get is the name, the county, and on the waters of whatever. So you can still be looking at a pretty wide area, but at least it can narrow you down enough to see if you can find the, the exact one. Then you have to look at the meets and bounds to try to figure out, is this what you're looking at on the map? And it's, it's pretty difficult. In some counties, people have spent their lifetime <laughs> mapping, actually drawing maps of all the properties where the original land grants were. For example, um, Wilkes County, there's a huge one done. Uh, Burke County, but no one, for, as far as I know, has ever done Mecklenburg. But you'll find some of the other counties where someone has done that. And so that'll be real easy. You just find that land grant map and you can see who originally owned that land. And related to the Revolutionary War, they, they at least in the Piedmont, you didn't start getting the land grants until the 1750s and 60s. So you're going to have a pretty good chance of hitting the person who owned that land. Okay. That's great, David. That's great. And of course, the world of plats is such a simple world where it's all really uncomplicated and easy to work with, isn't it? <laughs> Giant jigsaw puzzle. That's all it is. So, so there's a site called North Carolina Land Grants. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. David, could you link your site in the chat just so it's saved here for other people to see? I try to make things easy, nclandgrants.com.
Yep, and there it is. How about that? And as you can see in the news, I just passed 1 million images on the website. And you can guess what the first <laughs> the first county up there was back uh, in 2014, Mecklenburg. <laughs> Wow. Yep. Thank you. You said that, that that had not been done for Burke County? Someone has actually has a, um, in fact, it's online, has a land grant map for all of Burke County. And you can look up the land grant and it'll show you exactly where it is. The stripe of the property and everything, who the neighbors are. Wow. You're still probably guessing that the last name you know of is that person. You don't really know for sure, I don't guess. Yeah, but again, especially you're lucky if it's a sort of unique name. You know, there's, you know, when I when you search on McCorkle, it'll show you all the McCorkles and you can kind of start weeding them out so you can figure out which is which. What's not indexed though is the um, the neighbors that appear in the meets and bounds. If you're interested in that. Um, there's a series of books done by Margaret Hoffman where she abstracted all the land grants up until around 1780, and she indexed every single name that appears on the meets and bounds. And th that's really valuable for trying to put these together. But, you know, she got up to about 1780 and then stopped, and that's um, <laughs> it was a pretty huge effort. But there's, you know, she still only covered a fraction of the total grants because most grants were issued starting around after 1780. You know, once independence happened, then people went wild and started getting land. Great. Well, that's great. So what we really need to do uh, is we need to rev up the map. There's certain things, oh, you change the colors, putting in the roads. Uh, we, we, we have a project. One of our projects for Congress is to do this. And this is the map. Developing the map is our project uh, that we decided on. And involving, I mean, it's really a crowdsourcing because we're that uh, project. And people do this for all kinds of things. You can go on, there are all kinds of websites, such as True Smithsonian, and where you can go and you can help, um, uh, you can help uh, edit uh, or transcribe old documents. Uh, in the archives. So people are interested in helping doing so. I, I, I suppose we just need to let people know and there, you can do this and that we've got time and interest and you want to help and you can add to the map and research about these the different places and, and submit the material. Um, it's not completely open for everybody decided that also a long time ago but it's not people just can't go on here and change things otherwise it would be a horrible mess so but people can suggest things and then we and uh, just to make sure and once we've kind of looked at it um then maybe we can update the map so we've really come a long way with creating this map and now we need to get the roads on it and just let more people students and others and just happy people who like to be involved to get involved in, in updating this map and let it be out there and of use for people to uh, understand the revolutionary era. To add to what you just said about that, my intent is not to do all the book reading and research on each one of these items. It's simply to put the item on the list so everybody else can see it. I like research as much as anybody else but to build a list. I get lost reading 14 books and pages away. So my intent is just simply to put it up there and then other folks look at it and like that area and want to research that. That's the whole intent of it, crowdsourcing, as you said. And, and a lot of these sites also connect to Bill's uh, LA History site, which are the sites which are Revolutionary War. I'm not sure which one you could click on, but uh, many of them, like perhaps ones in Uptown Charlotte, like a, a battle or something, or some of them might click on and you'll see a, a link to Bill's uh, website. I'm not sure which one we're going to see. Oh, yeah, there we are. Look, this is Bill's website, links in there. 
a lot of these points were added based on Bill's data that he's collected. He graciously allowed me to use some of his points mm -hmm. to add to the list. There we are. So if you ever need to know exactly what the British were and the Americans were during the Revolutionary War on a particular day after they ate their breakfast, and then you can uh, you can track this from uh, from this website, which is uh, is it still expanding, Bill? You're adding more to it? Oh, definitely. It's a Mm. Don't expect our map to look like that. I'm not a computer programmer. <laughs> Bill is. Wow. Mm. Oh, yes, it's, it's very useful. We're trying to create things that are of use. It's his website. Okay, well, any other, what are other thoughts or questions about this site? I, I wanted to, to bring uh, you the, the, I'm sorry, the name of the young gentleman here. No, no, no. Way. Okay. You can do layers. Sure. Based upon what categories you and the group decide you would like them to have. So that you don't have to have different colored dots necessarily. You, if you want to have mills, he can give you a mill layer as long as that's one of your categories. I have a third how many different categories you might might be your base categories that you're looking for. But if it sounds to me is if you decide, okay, these are the categories that we want to use, we want to have layers on, he can give you layers for each of those. And and then in addition, if you want to show two layers at once with two categories, he can he can do that for you. Am I making sense that that yeah. may be a way to proceed with layers? And it's not too. You don't have to change the doc. Mm -hmm. You don't have to change the, the problem you're talking about is ArcGIS or QGIS. No, you can do it in Google, and basically a little box would appear over here with a list that's like mills, red ten layers. Yeah, and then people can click on the layers and kind of. Yeah, Google allows you to do ten layers yep. per map. Yep. Well, there you go. Then you may have to create another map and do another set of layers. So mm -hmm. if you if you if you said here are the major categories that I want to be able to show on the map, okay, either he or you could do those layers that way as long as you know which category they fall in. Now I don't know that your data has been reported in such a way that 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 they're already that you have the appropriate categories in there for everybody, everything that you want. But, but it seems to me that that, that I, I'm not, you know, I'm not a GIS specialist, so I couldn't do that. But it sounds like that that's something that. Now what you're talking about with layers and categories, one of the original ideas was to be able to show each category like all the mills or yeah. all of the fords or right. all of the forts yeah. or whatever yeah. and bring those out for somebody interested in those topics only. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that you can do that. And you wouldn't, you know, I think now. Uh, yeah. Does that yes, 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 there are there. yes, yes. Yeah, I can run this. Uh, there are let you can put layers on this, and that's why it's just a matter of a matter of doing it really. Uh, now we've got this base map, which is so splendid. Uh, so yeah, we can put layers on, and that would be very helpful to show the mills, the battles, the churches, and the different features. And you may be able to do a search of your data for each of your points right there, where you don't have to make the individual judgment. I don't but if the language is in there, off the map, if, if the language is in there, in, in you know, what you use to produce the the dots, you know, on what was submitted to you to search, it would everyone that had a mill written in one of the categories go out. And, and I don't know. I mean, well, uh, he says you could do some of this stuff. So, yeah, I can try to help you. Is going to have to do it, not me. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if I can see the spreadsheet and I can get in there and mess around with the dots and everything, I can probably do that for you pretty easily. Yeah. So just let I'm me know if so that's something the next part help we can actually. Yeah, if that's something you want to do, let me know, and I would love to help do that. Yeah, you're almost home anyway. 
and then just to kind of follow up on the extent, there's probably a way to label each of these um, markers. Do with a small type, like the name of the yeah, you can't. It gets a little so messy. There's a different um, in the data itself, the spreadsheet yeah. might be a different column for the screener. Um descriptive names for each of these sites. And there's it's already in the spreadsheet. Isn't just have to turn it on when you go into yeah. what I'm thinking about. Okay. Each, each, and each. rather than, and then uh, you might be able to at least you know, set up requiring that you click on it, that you just cover over icon might be sufficient to drop that home or whatever. You can just move your yep. corner on the side. Yep. Then it's not mousing over it. Yep. So that, if, if you find that useful. Yeah. Now, however, you probably wouldn't want to hold, you know, a, a long description, but mm -hmm. you might want to reserve that for a clip where you get more information. But um, so there are three levels of information, just small tags that are added under each marker, and then the hover and clip. There's probably a way to. Allow different uh, reaction to each of those. It's a bit that Max the names are turned on, and I guess we just get to turn the names on on the and Whatever the title bar is, the name or whatever, it'll display that now. It takes longer to load, but it'll display it. Did you have something to add, David? Um. Yes. I was going to say the other thing too is you should be able to send this data to Google Earth on your desktop and it has a lot more abilities with the layers and things too. Now that takes it out of the public thing, but if you're doing more research on your own, Google Earth is free and you can have that on your desktop and it's a little easier to work with, hiding the layers and things like that. I'm pretty sure there's an export. I can't remember off the top of my head. Well, that brings up a good point, too, of course, which is we want it to be um, very public facing. And so people can just click up. I mean, I, I know at school, when I'm teaching classes, I just want to click. You know, I don't want to go through a whole lot of, of hoo ha's of having to plug in special cables or download things. Yeah, yeah, like, I'm, I've got a lot of things to do, grading and so on. But I just want to go click. And there you are. Hey, there it is. So I think we just, you know, we, we really want the, the map to be so accessible that they can, the link comes, they get the link, use it, and here it is. This is our, and, they, and so anybody, can, we can share it, it's public, it's free, and it's uh, exciting, um, and anybody can use it. And uh, right now it's still a little bit buried away in our website there, Story Mapping Congress, you know, that's where it is, but we want to have that, take that link and make it, widely available, why not, you know? So anybody can just click on the link and there are the maps. And in this wonderful world that we live in, that's sort of what we kind of expect these days, isn't it? Okay, well, uh, good. So you know, we're coming along, we're moving along. Any other thoughts or questions particularly, or, or any particular sites or questions? I know um, uh, it's the re, uh, Contact me about the Catawba State Road. Does anybody know anything about that? He did contact me the other day. Anybody know about the State Road in Catawba County? Anybody? Yeah. I'm, I'm not um, I was contacted by one of the people who couldn't be here today, who was asking me about something called the State Road in Catawba County. The mm -hmm. State Road in Catawba County. Okay, <laughs> all right, okay. That okay. make a guess maybe how we send is what they're talking about. That is, that is an old road. Did he give a context as to where he read it? I'll have to go back and it probably would have been the East West. It probably would have been the East West Seventy or something where Seventy was laid 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 down. Mm -hmm. but, but, yeah. Okay, there's not it's something we should oh. David? Yeah. Thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you. 
you know, I was going to add something about publicity. Whenever there's an, a decent amount of updates to this map, you should post it on the Facebook page. Mm -hmm. So in other words, saying, hey, we just added 15 new locations to Mapstoria. And, you know, you don't want to do those every day, but if you do enough of them, people will start paying attention. And what they'll do is then they'll share it with some other group that they're part of, some genealogy group or historical group, and that's how you really get the message out these days, so to speak, is, is just keep, you know, keep posting updates. Like, this is our map story. <laughs> We've just updated it and all that. So, you know, I, I don't, I think anyone can post to the page as far as I know. Okay. That's actually, that's a very, you know, of course, that's a very good idea. That's I mean, that's how you use that page. And then it also gets you more likes and more followers and things like that. That's, that's right. That's, that's great. That's, of course, that's what we should be doing. We've got 1,038 followers. Uh, who are, that means at least somebody's checking it once in a while. And uh, these are folks who are really interested in maps. And we've got a lot of activity on the Facebook site. So, yes, of course, we should do that because it's, um, yes, very, good point. Very good point, David. And let's put in some roads. We'll put in some of the roads and then we'll, then we'll just put it out there. Uh, and then see what happens. And we might get a lot more traction on it. How many yeah. roads are you going to be able to put in at this point? Well, it's all. <laughs> I was thinking just Mecklenburg and it's sort of, you know, the ones like Trade, Trion, Providence Road, Nations Ford, Nations Ford Road, uh, probably fewer than 20. Yeah, something like you know, Potter Road, the famous, the infamous Potter. But when I said the word Potter Road, the bell rang. <laughs> the famous Potter Road, which really did exist and uh, went round Charlotte and doesn't anymore. Uh, so, um, so yeah, not uh, Takasiji Ford Road, it's sort of the basic colonial roads, the ones which were used in the, in the colonial revolutionary era, and just more or less in the Charlotte area, just to start off with. And then we can get into some of the good old discussions about where they. Where they actually ran, and where they didn't. Where they didn't. But if, if I get a few more in there, then yeah, let's do that. We'll put it out on the Facebook site. I think that then that would be good. Why not? Everybody, everybody's okay with that idea. Well, I'm not into that. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we should sit down and talk a little bit. Sure. About sure. Perfecting it a little more and push it out there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know. Back that was the whole point of the filters and categories. Yeah, back to that. Sure. Yes. Yeah, we we've been thinking about we got legal legal wordage involved in all of this, haven't we? We went over and we we've also got protection to make sure that people can't just invade it and do silly stuff. Okay, uh, great. Okay, well, that's, that's good. So um, any other thoughts about that for now? Anything else you think we should really definitely do? No, then anything else? Nothing for me, no. Um, does, does anybody know about, uh, has heard about a map for Charlotte that looks to be possible, just, Pre-Civil War yeah. that was found in the um, storage unit of, um, like, one of the big law firms, uh, Parker Poe's, was moving. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I know, the 1855 now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And then apparently, am I correct that they donated it to the Carolina Room at the public library? I believe so. I guess I had a chat with you about that. Uh, about that, and uh, believe it, yeah, we're talking about a map which, because there are many maps of pre Civil War Charlotte, and this one, as you said, was found in a lawyer's office, sort of hanging on the wall. It's like, oh, look at that. Well, actually, this is a really historic map. And I believe the Carolina Room, the public library, was storing it. Uh, I haven't received an update recently or heard an update. Have you heard anything about that one? I, I think there? Sheila Baumgartner yes, is. Yeah. Um, connected with the Carolina Room, yes, and yes. she said that um, she was hoping it would be, get, be online come this spring, that they're, mm -hmm. they're working on it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm eager to see what that looks like. Well, I guess we'll just have to keep talking. Yeah. 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 Ye
And, but have you have you had an opportunity to look at that? I've seen have the you, map. Have you had an opportunity to look at it and see if you think there may be some stuff on it? Have you had an opportunity? Sounds to me like you will all be have to visit to the map. They'll let you. They'll show it to you. I, I, I've seen it. I've, I've not seen it. Uh, Where's the map? It's the eight, it's an 1855 map of Charlotte, which was discovered in the lawyer's office, sort of hanging on the wall. Uh, Is that the Thomas Orr? Uh, I think it's the Orr map, maybe. Okay. Let, let's check that. I know that they were restoring it, or and uh, Sheila Fungarner from the library knows all about this. And I have to go back and look at my notes again. If, if the Carolina room is all in a jumble yeah. because they're having relocate so i don't know how long but i'll i'll be glad to reach out to Cheryl yeah, and great. see what i yeah it would, that would be very good because that's uh, uh that's uh, yeah that's that's a very interesting map because hey hugh yeah you, um david coming in here she sheila talked about it at one of the um round table meetings so it should be in the minutes yeah, yeah. it wasn't the last one maybe the one before because she talked about the map and what they were doing with it that's right. That's uh, you're right. Yes. Um, so I need to. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I need to go, go back and look at the minutes. Uh, I need to go back and look at the minutes from that meeting because I remember. Hold on, I've, I've got it up. Okay. Oh. Okay, David. Okay. Do you want to share, David? Um. I, no, it's just one paragraph. Oh, okay. Basically, says Sheila says the Carolina Room has acquired a large five foot by five foot 1855 Harris map of Charlotte City, which has been professionally restored for five thousand dollars. It's hand drawn with later additions. The library is also following the lead on another historic map. So basically, that's what the map is. It's the Harris map, 1855. So they're working on it. Thank you. You get to put your eyes on. Are they open now? Are they closed? Uh, the Carolina Room is, uh, they relocated up to the area near Rosedale. If you go out to Tryon and get to Eastway, Tryon and Eastway was an old shopping mall, and the Carolina Room is out there. Now, whether that you can actually go there, and uh, Merlin's shaking his head, no, you can't, but they will, they will do research for you. And at some time in the near future, uh, thanks to a lot of money, there will be a beautiful new library building in Uptown Charlotte yet again. Uh, and I believe the Carolina Room is moving back to that location. No one's nodding. So I believe the Carolina Room will move back to the to uh, new lodgings. In the it, it will, but you said near future. <laughs> no, right. I mean, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> it's going to be years. It will be years. Yes, it's going to be years. Oh, okay, well, at some point there will be a Carolina room yet again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but it, no, as far as we know, they're not really open to the public right now. I think if you submit a specific research request, like if you had a good reason to go in and see that map, they might be able to schedule some time for you. Yeah. But in general, it's not, it's functionally not open to the public. Yeah, yeah. I think that would be the approach. Then, but at some point, hopefully, it will be online, but, and uh, and we will be able to just do what we do with everything else, just scroll right in and look at it real close, like you do with, with, with so many resources online. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, any other thoughts about our one, our wonderful map, which at some point hopefully doesn't end up on the wall in a lawyer's office somewhere? Okay. Anything else about this wonderful interactive map, which we are producing? And will be a great resource for our community and for researchers and, and a lot of fun. Okay, anything else? Anything else you want to think about today? Perhaps anything else you want to put on the map? Think about? Thank you for all of the great presentation. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. What to do? Guy, guy really made this happen, the, the map. It's a, it's a joint effort. There it is. <laughs> Every, I mean, so we need to add the time. I guess next year, 
once ever we feel comfortable we just need to really push it out to through the facebook through the, the, the round table out to the community so people know about this map Part of too is the basic information needs to be vetted by somebody else besides me because mm. after a while we look at it so much and it's right over the mistake mm. and sometimes i go back and correct something or do something else and i'll see a mistake but i've looked at it five times already and never saw the mistake before. so mm -hmm. before it really goes truly out that this is really it mm. it's a pain but it just needs to be vetted by somebody else's eyes besides me and that's like 3,000 lines worth of stuff to look at. How much can you roll that up? Because if you have four points, that's what people are going to want to do. They're going to blow it up and blow it up and blow it up. How much can you roll it up right now? Oh, you can, so you can zoom all the way in. Yeah. Like you can go as deep in as you want. We could just do up down if we wanted. Well, that's what people are going to want to do. They're yeah. Going to want yeah. To do specific areas for the thousand points. Yep. You know, but that's not an issue. I mean, you can add. It It'll take as many as we add, add, as we can add. find. Yep. No limit. There's no limit. No. Okay. We could just start off with what we're not here. Yeah. Especially if we can get the Charlotte area straight, that would be good. Wouldn't we're going into the 250th. Charlotte is so important because it's so large. The rest of the state leaves it out. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the, revolution. the rest of the state really needs to recover you know, what happened in Charlotte and the Mecklenburg area. And they don't know, they can't see it. But it's going to totally take just because of the way the state's organized. You know. New Raleigh is the most important place in the state. Well, I'm part of it. <laughs> You're, you're the most informed person here about it. I'll, I'll maybe change the subject. Go maybe, ahead. Maybe once we're at some point, you can tell us, fill us in as to where the support coming from the state is and kind of summarize it. So, when you talk about trails at this point, as far as I'm aware, in the state trails appropriation, there is of that 27 million, unless I'm mistaken, none of that. Is coming to Charlotte. Mm. Okay. Well, when you think about it, if you if you were building trails in in, in Charlotte and Mac, in Mecklenburg, you're not looking to the state for money. You're you want to get your money from the city. So, well, give, give us a big picture. Well, the rest of us here are probably not into the details, but just kind of give us a big picture. But, that the state is like the governor would support. What, what's what there's is a, the state doing? And there's a state trails office, and there are a number of state trails that have been designated as state trails, so they are eligible for state trail funding. Um, the colonial trails, or well, I think the only quote historical trail. Um, over Mountain Victory, North Carolina State Trail, but there are other trails that you know that obviously have historical components. Uh, Rolling up, well, in particular the, the Yadkin River Battle Trail. You know that extremely important on you know from Revolutionary War standpoint, not only for Over Mountain Victory, uh, the Rolling Up River Trail, the Dam River Trail. My hope is that you know that you know, that, that, that it can be a Catawba River trail that's like the Yadkin River Trail, you know, about, mm -hmm. and that you can then attach all sorts of you know stuff to it in terms of historical and other significance. But that there is no Catawba River Trail, even though there's a Yadkin River Trail and the Dan River Trail. So okay, cool. Is there a committee or a board that's set up to, to commemorate the 20, 250th anniversary of the revolution in the state of North Carolina? Is, how yes. is that organized at the highest level? 
Yeah, I, I don't care. You, you, you come to some of those meetings. No, I, I'm not. Okay. There is a there there it's um there, there is a uh, the the governor in the state department of natural uh, natural and cultural resources uh, has a, a group of state employees that have an America 250 committee, and they are meeting on a quarterly basis. Uh, it's not restricted at this point, and there are people who are, who are within that who are working on uh, the history, the 250th history, uh, and, and, and I, I go on that, I think, Mr. Water goes on that. Some of the other folks out across the state who are concerned with trails go on that. I don't know who, there's nothing, it would be great if somebody, you know, from, from this group got on that and yeah. said, we want to attend those meetings. You in particular, because of your focus on revolutionary war. I, don't, I wouldn't say I would be the best person. That, Mecklenburg County should definitely be referencing. Well, I don't know. Mean, I just, I'm sure somebody is. I don't know exactly who that is. I have to see the list and talk to you know the, the people who are involved. In that. But we won't be going into that any of that. We are behind. So North Carolina is well behind South Carolina when it comes to having uh, an American 250 commission. Yes. The South Carolina has had a commission mm. for you know. A number of years, North Carolina doesn't have a commission which could operate independently from you know, the, the, the governor's office and have continuity. I had a conversation the other day with a, with a gentleman who said that South Carolina was already planning uh, uh, commemorative activities for the 250th that would cover a 13 year period. In fact, that was. So there are things clearly that North Carolina could do that it hopefully will do in the not too distant future to enhance <coughs> what's happening, uh, to enhance the, the commemorative activity. But Mecklenburg, and, and you all need to really think about what you would like to have happen throughout the Declaration of Independence to the 250th anniversary of the adoption of the Constitution of Application of Law. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm prepared to talk about that. Oh, yeah, I understand. Say, well, no, well, you, you, you're you all time and, and the rest of us, and then thanks for filling us in. Was, uh, yeah. But when it comes to. So, I will say, like, the. You need to find somewhere <coughs> in the, the museum, of yep. course, that has to be integrated. Yeah. So the North Carolina Department of Cultural Resources, they are overseeing the 250th celebration. Basically, sort of like you were saying, there's not really, first of all, there's not money. So they're not giving people money to do stuff. Duh. <laughs> they're never going to have money. But anyway, they're also, um, essentially, they have like a framework to follow, like three different themes to focus on. And as far as I know, all the Department of Cultural Resources is really doing is they're going to have kind of a list of events happening around the state starting in 2024 through, you know, as many years as they can keep it going, especially 2026, I'm sure, but like, you know, through all of that. So basically, yeah, I don't think there is a super concrete vision or plan from the state. Um, so I think it really is up to locals to make of it what we want to make of it. So if, you know, if, for example, the, at the museum, we're working with, you know, we're starting those conversations with folks to figure out, like, what does a 250th celebration look like? We got old Hezzy's house up the hill, like something's going to happen here. But the question is, what's the scale of it? Is it a MECDEC celebration? Is it a year, a whole year of programs collaborating with everybody around the community? It's, it's just a question of, like, people buying in. And because... 
as you've said multiple times, like the state is not going to, it doesn't seem like the state is going to be the institution that is really pushing it. They're going to help and hype it up a little bit, but I don't think they're going to be the people who are like coordinating in any direct sense. That's, that's what I'm for. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with that. But, you know, as I mentioned, the state is having the, the thing on May 20th is supposed to be the kickoff. Yeah. Conference. That's supposed to like get things kicked off, but um, I don't know if there's anything much beyond that at this point. Um, for Charlotte, um, I think you should invite the president. There is historical precedent for that, for the MECDEC celebrations. <laughs> oh, yeah. You mean invite the president of the United States? Yes, sure. It's, it's happened before. Yeah, we had Ford, we had Eisenhower, we had Taft. Yeah. We need to, that, we need to. He can ride that horse, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the the opportunity exists for the state to have, you know, to adopt a bill that says we're going to have a 250th commission like South Carolina has, where the legislature can devote money to that commission and then do a lot more activities just like South Carolina is doing and planning to do. So that, that is an additional option that could go well beyond probably in terms of funding well, what can we do right now. That's not to say, I mean, there may not, you know, there are people interested in introducing legislation that would move us to the point where a lot more money could come in and the legislature could have more buy -in. Well, what you need, what you need is there needs to be an ally in the legislature. If anybody knows anybody, that's how that gets pushed. Um, you know, is to have somebody on the inside pushing for that. Otherwise, the legislation is not going to get passed. It's not like the olden days where the entire legislature were native North Carolinians and they had ancestors. Now it's a lot of, you know, the Senate's run by a Yankee, if you will. <laughs> so, um, you're going to, especially maybe somebody with local ties, that who needs to push it. And unfortunately, I don't know anybody like that. But if anyone knows someone who's your representative who does have local ties, you know, ancestry, they may be a good person to try to push something like that to happen. Well, I've got, I've got a suggestion for you. Tim Moore, longest serving uh, speaker of the House in the history of the state, comes from Kings Mountain raised in Kings Mountain, walked all over Kings Mountain when he was a boy. He spoke at the last commemorative event of the uh, Battle of Kings Mountain, even though it was down in South Carolina. And he indicated at that time that he had had four uh, of his ancestors who were on the mountain on the quote, right side at that time. Uh, you know, he, he can move legislation. Uh, Hugh Blackwell from Burke County, Harvard graduate, uh, law school. You know, he, he, he's aware of what South Carolina has been able to do with their commission. And you have people sitting here who know what South Carolina has been able to do with a, you know, a commission over and above what can be done with within any one of the South Carolina governor's departments to enhance, you know, the, the, you know, the, the celebratory activities around the 200. So I, I think your point is well made in that regard. Looking at the Senate, the North Carolina Senate side, uh, the, uh, was it the, the uh, Senate majority leader uh, is from, uh, Rockingham County. Uh, Not originally. <laughs> uh, He's a transplant. Basically, what David suggested, they created a commission two years ago. Right. Charles Baxter was right. designated. That's right. Commission. And, and so they're going to drew in four members from the House as commissioners and then the commission. Yeah. Then they still want you to go to your local reps and talk about it. Oh, you still go through all, all your local stuff. I'm not saying not. Oh, no, no. I, I was not saying not to do that. You need to, whatever horse is there to ride, ride. And if you can get another horse, uh, 
or other horse, in addition to horses, that you get those horses too. They have good luck with funding from the legislature too. So well, well there we go. Well. So let's pull things together here at this point. We're coming right up on two o'clock here, and I'm not sure we're going to get everything sorted out about the legislature. No, we're not. <laughs> um, no, we're not gonna... fixing North Carolina's political problems in two minutes. No, no. Now. Happen, but we've had a very excellent day today. Thank you, everybody, for coming and attending, joining in the Congress and being part of our deliberations and uh, exciting talks. Uh, everybody who gave David gave a great talk. Bill, thank you very much. And uh, the, the two folks, oh, hello, David. There you are back on the screen again. Uh, David. And um, uh, also for Eric and Russell from, uh, from Orangeburg. We had a great look at the map. We've got plans for the map. The map is happening, and then we're going to zoop it out into that's a new word, zoop it out into the uh, into the world, and and with the help of the museum, which will be a, a big feather in the cap for the museum to be able to advertise it. We're going to do great things for North Carolina, Mecklenburg County, Historic Bank of Congress. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.